good morning and welcome to our web workshop and today the topic of the session is collaborate ultra what is it and the presenter for this web workshop is Whitney Boswell and by the way I forgot to introduce myself my name is Katrina Stoops e-learning faculty development coordinator so Whitney Boswell is the presenter for this web workshop. Whitney is the senior instructional designer at City University of Seattle. She manages different uh, instructional design projects. She creates engaging online mixed mode and in-person courses, supports e-learning technology, and delivers uh, seminars and webinars on using technology in the online classroom. Today in this web workshop, Whitney will show you how to integrate Collaborate Ultra into Blackboard, how to set it up, how to join Collaborate Ultra. She will also show you several ways of using it. This workshop will be interactive, and um, that's the reason why we need to go over some house rules. So to participate in the interactive activities that Whitney has prepared for you, uh, you can use the chat and type your questions and comments in the chat box. Um, or you can use your microphones and speak. But when you're not speaking, please keep uh, your mics muted so, so that we wouldn't get that background noise. If you do not have a microphone, you can always call into the session by um, clicking on the icon that looks like a menu up at the top and then select use your phone for audio. We would love to hear your voices and see your videos because one of the goals for this uh, workshops is not only to share uh, strategies but also build a community. So please if you have a uh, video if you have um, if you can speak please turn your mics turn on your mics and turn on your videos um, if during this session you will have uh, any technical difficulties please use the chat box to let us know um, we have several uh, moderators in this collaborate room and we will we are monitoring the chat and we'll help you with any technical uh, issue you um, if you experience any um, and I think that's all for now and I will turn it to Whitney perfect thank you Katrina so this uh, web, web workshop is really a basic understanding of what Collaborate Ultra is, um, super, super basic. So it is a web conferencing system that is tied to Blackboard courses. So it's within Blackboard. Um, it can also be used without uh, Blackboard like we're doing now. And, um, but in Blackboard in a course, um, you have a lot of different options in the way you use it. And the sky's the limit. In the, your imagination is the limit. So here are some ways you can use it. Having class discussions, having a course orientation uh, webinar, having students meet as groups, um, either informally, just letting them know it's available to them and they can uh, talk amongst themselves and join or some formal way where you know they're doing a group presentation or they're doing a group activity and then um, giving clash lecture if you want to have that extra time there um, or presentations to the to your students you can do, use it for that there's also recording presentations um, you can record your presentations to give to your students you can have individual students or groups of students do presentations they can do it live they could record them um, you could hold office hours and then you could also have guest speakers um, join and uh, if especially if they aren't able to get to wherever you are it's a nice option and then virtual field trips as well so um, we're going to go over the most basic things um, such as joining which you all did today very well good to see you all here um, and then using your audio and uh, camera as well as the chat 
and hopefully answer any of your questions about how it works within Blackboard, setting up your course room or your sessions you specifically want to use, and then um, discussing best practices and any ideas you have. And then the more detailed and uh, help with tools will be coming uh, next month in June. All right, so the first activity, I would like you to turn on your audio and video and let us know a little bit about yourself. So what classes you teach, what, what's your name, and then share maybe something you'd rather be doing right now than in a web workshop, and then what do you want to get out of this workshop? And I'm just going to go down the list of participants and ask you to turn on and say hello. So. If you want to look at the list of participants, what you'll want to do is open the purple icon at the bottom right if it's not already open. It's called a Collaborate Panel. And that gives you some icons at the bottom. And the first one is a little bubble, which is the chat. And the second one is two little people. And if you click on that, you'll actually see the list of people in the list. So I'm going to go with Adam. Adam, if you want to turn on your video and microphone and Hello. answer your questions. So I do not have a video camera on my computer at my desk. Um, so it's just going to be audio for me. Um, That's fine. But uh, yeah, my name's Adam and I teach uh, English and have taught Russian, could teach Russian again if needed. Um, and what I would rather be doing right now, um, probably hiking. Uh, it's a nice day out, and I haven't been out there yet. Um, as far as what I want to get out of this workshop, I just am looking for a good overview and some ideas about how to use the use the tool. Perfect. Thank you, Adam. How about you, Amanda? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Amanda Steven. And I teach accounting classes in the School of Management. And right now, I think I'd rather be outside, same as Adam. <laughs> and what would you like to get out of the workshop? Just uh, learning how to better use Collaborate. I know the basics, but I'm looking for a little bit more information. OK. Yeah, you might want to make sure you're signed up for the June ones as well. I am. I am already. Perfect. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, Christine. And maybe while Christine's getting her microphone ready, um, at the bottom right, you're going to see probably my video. And if you want to make that bigger, you just click on it, and it will take over the screen. And the presentation will become that small little square. And I will become uncomfortably large on your screen, for me, anyway. Um, and that does not impact anyone else in the room. So everyone else would still see what they have up there. So, Christine, are you able to, am I missing it in the chat? Ah, there we go. Okay, we'll loop back around. Cindy. Hi, I'm Cindy Singleton. I'm Director of General Studies, and I teach English and the General Studies capstone classes. And what I'd rather be doing right now is anything outside, and that could be weeding, mowing, getting dirty, <laughs> it doesn't even have to be fun. I'd just like to be out of doors today. What I'd like to get out of this workshop is um, just more confidence in using the tool. I've used it a little bit, and it's always a little scary. Yeah. It can be quite intimidating. But hopefully you can, yeah, learn to be a little more comfortable today. All right, Yvette. It looked like you were going to... Type in the chat. All right, so Yvette is teaching English 101, and she'd rather be uh, doing something that's a priority on her desk right now. <laughs> but someone signed her up, so she better be here. Welcome. And 
she'd like to become more familiar with Collaborate. So yeah, this will be very helpful for you. Thank you, Yvette. Okay, Gaynell. Hi everyone, I'm Gaynell Walker. I am an online field supervisor in the Ed Leadership. And I also teach um, several other courses. Um, at the present time, I'm teaching leadership for diverse learners. And in the summer, I do a mixed mode class, which is change management. And this is just always a refresher for me. Um, one of the things that I want clarity on is when folks are joining, if they're joining as presenters or participants or moderators and just kind of clarifying that. And something I guess I'd rather be doing, I'm a grandmother and actually I'm multitasking right now because my little two-year-old grandson is being such a good young man watching his favorite show while grandma is doing this online course. <laughs> I, I babysit, you know, while their parents are at work, but he's doing a good job over there. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you. Before we move on to Goodrun, I'm going to show you a different view of what a discussion can be. So I'm going to turn off my sharing and that will give us a bunch of videos. So if you're using Chrome, you're going to have five videos or really four videos available. Um, and then at the top right, there's a box with three boxes underneath it. And if you click on that, it will change to the last person speaking or the person actually speaking will be the largest box while the ones underneath them will be smaller. So go ahead, Goodwin. And I will actually put those questions in the chat so you can know what you're going to talk about. Hi, this is Gudrun. I'm teaching, uh, I teach English, German, and TESOL. And um, I've already used Collaborate Ultra in some of the TESOL online classes. Um, but my main question for today is like little things like this, what you just said, how can I change the mode so that everybody can see each other? How can I share um, a document or a presentation while, I'm, while we're talking and discussing? So a little bit like, how do I make this uh, collaborate session a little bit more interesting with my online students? Thank you. Looks like Christine got your audio to work. Um, well, actually, it's on the phone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Oh, and Goodwin, um, we might not go over um, like sh document sharing and that sort of thing today, but we'll definitely mm -hmm. go over that in the June uh, web workshops. Okay, yeah, I'm signed up for that. Yeah. Perfect. And, and right. how, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Christine, take it away. All right, so I was a little distracted trying to get the audio going there because I was blocked for some reason. Um, so I teach in um, the Ed Leadership programs, and I do in person, and I've got a couple of online uh, courses that I teach. So I just want to learn some more uh, regarding how I could use this in my online courses. Perfect. Thanks for joining. Thanks. All right, jumping down to Maja or Maha, I'm not sure. I apologize for not saying your name right. Uh, that's Hello. okay. Hi. How do you say um, Maya. Maya. Yes. Um, so I'm Maya. I just started teaching German. And um, yeah, I don't know anything about this program. So anything you will tell us is going to be very helpful to me. Um, and yeah, I'd probably also rather be outside, like getting some ice cream. <laughs> ice cream sounds delicious right now. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Rachel. Hello. Um, I teach in the hi. I teach in the TESOL program, 
and um, I am, uh, yes, I would rather be outside riding my bike. <laughs> um, bike rider. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I'm going to sign up for the June session as well. That's, I think, the one that I really want, but I know there's something that I will learn from this one as well. So, um, yeah, great to be here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for joining. All right, Randy, I believe you are going to type in. And you are all ready. Well done. Um, so Randy teaches in the TESOL certificate program as well. And he'd rather be, they'd rather be outside in Ashland, Oregon. Oh, that's where you are, going for a walk. OK. Um, going to his son, their son's graduation uh, master's degree in math. Wow, that's impressive. Ah, thank you. Um, and she just wants to feel more comfortable using Collaborate Ultra. Perfect. So hopefully this will help you. All right, and Susan, last one. Can't quite hear you, Susan, if you're talking. If you want to type in the chat, if you have a specific issue, let us know. OK. And sometimes technology issues happen, and there'll be inevitably something minor that goes wrong, and you just find a way to deal with it. So typing is perfectly fine, although it's been really great to see faces as well as voices. And while they're typing, I'm going to share the PowerPoint again. That is a great idea, Adam. OK, so Susan teaches in SOM and SAL in HR um, and MBA courses, um, as well as sustainability. and. <laughs> would like to be doing what Cindy mentioned and mowing and doing anything outside. Um, we have had a lot of rain in Florida and the grass is uh, getting too high for your liking. Perfect. Yeah, I too would rather be even weeding, as Cindy said, than being inside. Perfect. Thank you, everyone, for jumping in and um, letting us know a little bit about yourself and helping me understand what you're looking to get out of this session. So we're going to jump into our next um, objective for the webinar, which is learning how to access it within Blackboard. And um, so we're just going to jump in. First, how do you access it in Blackboard? There are two ways. And on the screen, you'll see, it's, hopefully it's not too small. Um, but on the top left, under the three dashes menu, there is a little icon with a magnifying glass in it. And if you can't see it and you want to see a little bit closer, if you click on that and click on the plus icon, it will take it 
quite large for you and then you can uh, maneuver with the scroll bars to get where you want on the screen and that does not impact anyone else so that's only what you see um, so there's two ways to access on the left hand side of every single course there's a quick link slash collaborate link and that is how students access it's also how you could access if you'd like um, and on that page you then look for Blackboard Collaborate Ultra and click on it or um, and this is only some of the way that instructors can get to it is in the control panel there is course tools and under that is the Blackboard Collaborate Ultra and when you click on that you get to this page on the right did someone have a question Um, Christine, you may want to mute your your phone if you can. Oh, okay. Do you know how to yes. do that? Got it. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so once you're here in this area, um, there's a couple things you should know. So the course room, uh, let me get a pointer. Uh, the course room is a generic room that comes with every single course so your my workspace has one uh, every single live course you teach has one it just it's automatically there and available um, someone had mentioned roles and the automatic role for an instructor in a course if you go into any course room or any session that you create you will join as a moderator and then the default role for students to join a session or really course room is participant so there's three different roles you have the participant which can do basically your audio video you can write on the screen um, and chat and then there's a presenter and a presenter can share their desktop they can share PowerPoints um, and then there's the moderator and the moderator can record and do polls and do breakout groups so the more you go up the more uh, abilities you have okay so in the course room there's a way to uh, edit the course settings and the reports so you have actually reports for every course room and those reports to say who joined when they joined how long they were there so that's really helpful if you don't want to waste time on taking tallying who joined during the session um, if you're giving participation points or whatnot you can actually do that afterwards and not have to worry about it in session and then uh, so those three dots at the far right are how you join the course room so just like you joined using a link in your email for today that join course room is a link that opens up the collaborate session in the browser just like you did today you have an anonymous dial-in so this is new and this is for um, people who do not have an internet connection at all and will just be joining uh, through audio so if they know they're gonna be out in the mountains but they're gonna have their phone this is th that could be a way that you could help them join but it is separate from the call-in feature um, when you're also online watching um, you have edit settings which we'll go over settings in a little bit and then copy guest links so I'd mentioned earlier that you could have a guest uh, speaker join and that's how you would get the link to copy to give to them and then locking the course room uh, we're gonna see in a second that you can create sessions specific sessions and if you don't want students to get confused about using the course room or using the session you could lock the course room so that they have no possibility of going somewhere where they don't want to go and speaking of sessions you can also create a session so creating sessions is great for groups uh, so you could create a group a session for each group you know team one team two team three and then they have a specific place where they can join the whole quarter um, you could also do you know the course orientation so it has its own name at a specific time um, but when you hit that create session here are your settings so you have the name you have when it starts when it ends and then they have a no end option which is great for groups because if you click no end it means they can use that room that team room for the entire quarter 
And then early entry, um, you'll notice I got on probably half an hour earlier today. Um, and that just depends on how soon you want to get in. I usually do at least a half an hour, but it has up to an hour. So if you want to go in an hour before it actually starts, but actually before this time, then you do that there. And we had a question. Um, do you have to create a session for students to be able to meet you and collaborate? You do not if you are joining the course room. So the course room is automatically there. So if you just want to say, hey, join the course room and we're going to meet, that's totally fine. Um, they do join as participants and you as a moderator. But you could edit the settings and change that if you wanted them to join as moderators. Um, and then here's the, how you would do that. So the default attendee role is participant, but that's a drop down menu. And it's then it has the presenter and the moderator. So if you want everyone to be able to come in and moderate, you could have them do that. And that is what I suggest for groups so that they can do everything they need to do in their group. They need to join as moderators. And then you have uh, allowing recording downloads. So do, do you, if they do recordings or if you do recordings, do you want everyone to be able to download them? Um, do you want an, an, an well, anonymized chat messages? So today, a bunch of you are chatting in the chat box. The recording does capture that. But because I've checked it as anonymous, um, it will be anonymous user one, anonymous user two instead of your names. And then uh, moderator permissions, you really don't need to worry about the showing profile pictures. You'll notice that Aaron and I both have profile pictures. Um, but that's mainly a, a secondary ed option. And then uh, participants can use audio, share the video, post in chat. You can take those away if you want. Um, if you came up with an idea that you didn't want that. And then you can also um, draw on whiteboard and files. So that is checked right there. Um, you can take that away from participants if you'd like. So that is something you can do. And I'm going to have you try it out right now. So at the top left, there are some options. There's a little pencil icon. There's a little shape icon. And if you click on one of those and then draw right on the screen, um, you can do that. So go ahead, everybody, choose something. There's text, there's drawing, there's actually different colors, there's a little circle to the right. And then the far left icon is a little uh, pointer icon, it's called select. And if you click that, you can click on anything and move it and make it bigger. Or you can click on something and delete it individually. I have a question. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot to raise my hand. There. No worries. Okay. <laughs> Is it Go ahead. because you've shared the screen that we can all write on here and see what each other's doing? Um, there are two ways you can do it. So you can share the whiteboard, which is just a blank whiteboard and you can write on it and then the other way is by sharing a document okay so and you can't write on yeah so okay. you can share the whiteboard or share uh, like a PowerPoint an image or uh, a PDF those are the three options you can upload and all of those are able to be written on thank you you're welcome so, does someone want to click on the little eraser icon? It's the far right icon. Yes, Goodwin. Um, so, you just said uh, you just talked about sharing your, um, a PowerPoint or your desktop. And where do you do that? How do you do that? Yeah, so we won't cover that in this session, but I will show you. Um, there is uh, so right next to the chat, if you if you have the chat open. Yes, it says share content. Yeah, two to the right is share content. And right now you're a participant, so you won't be able to share oh, anything. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. um, but oh, it comes if I share, role. yes, yeah, if I, I share my screen, you're going to see a lovely mirrored image. 
and to the right you'll see these are your options when you're a moderator and you can the blank whiteboard is what I was talking about with Cindy it's just a blank page here and right. then share application is sharing the desktop like I am now which you cannot write on and then share files is where I go to do my presentation mm -hmm. and you can do that you can share content also as a moderator or just as a, uh, a presenter uh, presenter and moderator can okay. share content. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, Gaynell, you're welcome. I just, had, I just had a clarification question. So yeah. for today's um, course, we're all participants, correct? And you're moderator. Correct. correct. Yeah. So my question is, um, because I do like the two-hour reflective seminars, with mm -hmm. interns, mm -hmm. online interns. And I did one previously last quarter, and I think I probably put everyone in as a moderator, thinking that in order for them to be able to, you know, um, either respond back or whatever, they needed that, but they could still just be participants, correct? And still have the use of the audio and the video just when they're responding to each other's questions and those kinds of things, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they don't have to be moderators. Now, coming up in a couple weeks, um, the students are going to have to do a presentation so and have visuals. So now, would they be moderators then, or would they still just be participants? They would need to be at least pre presenters or, presenters, or okay. moderators. Yeah, moderators or presenters would work. And then something I should mention is that if you, for example, if you just default to their participants, um, and then next time when they're doing their presentations, you want only the person who's doing the presentation to have the, the reins, have all those options, you mm -hmm. can actually um, change their role while you're in session. So I'm going okay. to change right now. Well, actually, I suppose I should share my screen so you can see. Um, so if you see my screen now, I'm on the participant list, and all of you are participants down here. And I'm going to do the dot, dot, dot next to Adam's name, and I'm going to make him a presenter. And then he joins the presenter area. And now in the share content, he would see these top three things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Thank you. That's an option. You're welcome. Okay. So I'm going to back to presentation. And there we are. Okay. And then private chat really quickly. If one of you were to have an issue, um, I have the moderator supervise all private chats so that, um, uh, Aaron could reach out to you and specifically and no one else could see that chat and say hey what's the problem work through it so everyone doesn't have to see all of the troubleshooting they're doing individually between the two of them so that's a nice option um, particularly for this type of activity uh, so the eraser for the screen um, the top left or the top left those tools there is at the far right there's a t and then there's a little eraser and if you hover over it, it says clear and that would clear the entire uh page of all the writings that are on it does that answer your question you don't have an eraser either Oh, actually, on, on mine it says color. I don't know if everyone else it says color, but it's like a blue dot next oh, to yep. the T, and it says color when you click on left. it. Yeah, to the okay, left. Okay, to the left of the color. Oh, yeah, to the right of the T is the color, and but there's no eraser. Oh, oh, we just found a new thing. Apparently, only a moderator can clear it. Huh. Okay. We all learned something new today. So I have a little icon that looks like an eraser and I can clear the whole board at once instead of uh, deleting individual things on it. So I will send you a screenshot of what that looks like after the session's over. You're in control. 
<laughs> exactly. You're welcome. Okay, so then we have sessions down here. Well, let me get my pointer back. Um, we have the sessions here. So once I've created a session, it lists them here. And the dot, dot, dot next to it will give me how to join. So I'll go to the next thing. Same, same as the course room, the join, the dial in, um, editing the settings, the reports, deleting it if you don't want it anymore, and copying the guest link. And the guest link is... I did not include it here, but it pops up right here once you created a session and it asks you, do you want to allow guests? And you click yes, and then it asks you the role you want for that guest. So if all your students are joining as participants, but you want your guest speaker to join as a presenter, you can do that specifically for them. And then recordings. So you can record sessions, you can record pieces of sessions, and they will all show up in the recordings area. So in Blackboard, in the Collaborate Ultra area, there's these that same menu icon at the top left. And when you click on it, you will see recordings. And if you click on that, you will actually see the list of recordings there. And if you don't see them, you can click on Recent Recordings and get recordings within a date range. Uh, yes, Maya. Um, so just one more time, the difference between um, having a classroom and the session is just um, that the session can be open to students to join without me. And so they can like use it more often versus a course room is just like um, for one time meetings. Um, not quite. So the course room is more like there all the time. So students could use it anytime and you could use it with them anytime. You would have to change the, the role of the students when they come in to be moderator if you wanted them to be able to use it consistently um, with certain higher level tools. Um, but you wouldn't have to. If you just want them to be able to talk to each other, they could use the course room at any time over and over. Um, sessions are more for when um, you have specific groups and they need to meet um, you know throughout the quarter but you don't want three groups joining the course room at the same time and kind of talking over each other and um, doing that so creating the sessions allows them to have a specific space where they're not stepping on each other's toes if that makes sense okay but so when I when I create sessions um, I have like three groups I create three sessions so the students can meet separately from each other, but I'm also not available. I'm not in there then, right? Um, you could join. Anyone could join any of the three sessions. They're just looking for their specific, uh, specifically titled. So like if I'm in team one, I can join team one. And at our, as a team, we decided we're gonna meet at this time in this, in our room. Um, but I could join team two or team three technically, but I don't know when they're meeting, so I'm probably not gonna join, if that right. makes sense. And then you can join in any of those sessions. So if they let you know when they're joining, you could join in gotcha. as well. But in the course room, I have to be present. There has to be a moderator? Nope, nope. they could join okay. any time, yeah. All right, so, okay. So it's basically not that big of a difference, correct? Yeah, there's pretty much no difference at all other than if you change, the, if you keep settings different for whatever reason you want to, but technically there's nothing different okay. other than the course room is there all the time. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> yes, Susan and Randy, that has happened to me as well. Um, so I talked about that locked, locking the course room uh, earlier. So if you have a specific session you're going to, sometimes if you don't lock it, half the class can end up in the course room and half the class can end up in a session room and that can be a lovely disaster. Okay, so that's how you find your recordings. Um, you can also um, take the links from the recording, so that drop the dot, dot, dot next to the specific recording. You can actually edit the name, so you'll see I've, um, I did it in my workspace in my course room, and I just renamed it to 
uh, workshop prep. And then in the dot, 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 you can actually get the link to the recording. So if you don't want students to have to go here to see the recording, you could actually copy that link and put it in announcement or put it wherever you'd like so that they can watch it. And you don't have to be logged into Blackboard to watch the recordings. And that's also where you would download it if you wanted to download it. All right, so that is the basic general area of how you access Blackboard and Collaborate Ultra. Yes, Randy. Yes, I can definitely do the recordings again. So if you record, uh, the top left, there are three dashes that give you a menu for uh, recordings. And once you click on recordings, you get the list of your recordings. So in Collaborate, in the top left, there's those three dashes. If you are a moderator, the first thing you will see is start recording. And that will start recording. And then the same place you will see stop recording uh, to stop. But you have to be a moderator to see it. And once you do stop the recording, they will process and end up here. And the dot, dot, dot on the right will allow you to change the name of the recording and copy the link to the recording, as well as download the recording if you turned that setting on. Does that help? Ah, yes, so copying the link to the, uh, so here you would get the copy and um, you would copy the link to the recording and then you could put that in the, like an announcement. So, hey, great session. Here's the link to the recording from yesterday. Um, feel free to review it and then you could email that announcement out and then they just click on it and they can see it. Okay, so let's generate some ideas. How could you use Collaborate Ultra? So in the chat, um, everyone give at least one idea. It could be specific, it could be pretty general, um, it could be something specific to a class you're teaching now, or just something you would like to do in the future. Um, so just type it in the chat. That's great, Cindy. I think a one-on-one -on -one with student to review their paper would be really great, especially if they're struggling. Even if they're not, oh, that'd be kind of nice to have that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a great option to record, Randy. That's a great option. You know, if you know that they're struggling with something about an assignment or something, making a recording and sending it out is really helpful. It's helpful to see see things in action rather than just um, reading. Yeah, discussions. Discussions are great. It's a really nice option to chat, especially like we did before, where you can see everyone's video and um, talk. Yes, one-on-one -on -one again class discussions, holding office hours. Yeah, students like classes, uh, feel like they like classes better and feel more supported if they, if instructors offer office hours, even if they don't show up. Recording demos. Yeah, teaching demos. I actually used that as an example uh, the last week. <laughs> Good one. Yes, Cindy. Um, could you explain that to me a little more? Your question about the two screens? Yeah. So I know that um, you're looking at two screens right now, correct? I am. Yeah. So um, I got confused when I did office hours because I only had one screen and then I um, 
I set up my personal laptop and logged in as myself on that laptop so I would know um, kind of what I was looking at, what students were seeing. And then I mm -hmm. got this, um, the audio, I got this high pitched re squealing noise. <laughs> so I had to shut it off. So can yeah. you um, give us some tips about how you are using the two screens? Yeah, so I typically use double screens for when I'm sharing my desktop. So not necessarily when I'm sharing a PowerPoint like I am today, um, because I'll just keep the chat open. Um, let's see. So for example, do you have the classroom on one screen? And then are you did you duplicate that session or did you log in again and you have a second session on the other screen? Uh, no, so I'm in the same session just one time. And like you can see here, I would actually just have these shared here and I would just be seeing what I'm presenting and moving through them while I'm monitoring the chat and the attendees as I need to. However, if I am sharing, so that would be if I'm sharing files here, but if I'm sharing my screen, if I'm looking at the course, um, what I would do is when you're sharing, you can't see, if you're on one screen, you can't actually see the session. So if people are chatting, if people are doing something, if you don't have the audio notifications turned on, you can't see and you're going to have to toggle back and forth between the chat and what you're sharing here. So how I use dual screens is I'm sharing this screen. So I'm going to drag this the actual session with the participants in the chat to my second screen over here. And then I will share my left hand screen. So I'm sharing on the I'm sharing the left hand screen and doing going to Blackboard and or wherever. And then on the right hand screen, which you guys can't see anymore, is the session where I can see what I'm sharing as well as the uh, chat and the um, participants. Does that make sense? Yes, okay now. This is a basic question. I made a comment, but I'm not sure if I sent it. So do you click on the little speech bubble to send it or the square with the arrow? Because I made see. the comment about using um, Collaborate Ultra with doing the two-hour reflective seminars. Did you receive it? I'm not sure I if... I don't think I did. Um, so, so when you're in I... the chat yeah. and it says say something and you typed it, uh huh. Right. Um, right. I think you have to hit enter for it to send. Oh, okay. You want to try that? Because I hit enter, but the message is still there. Hmm. <sighs> So do you have time to stay after it a little bit for me to work sure. through that with you? Sure. Okay. Yeah, no problem. So we will, I, how much time do I have left? Are we out of time? We're over time. So ooh. some best practices. There is a tutorial for best practices on the help site. Um, and then if you have additional questions, please sign up for June's webinar. We're going to go into way more detail of all those tools I just barely show you a little bit of um, and might have overwhelmed you. Please don't feel overwhelmed. Um, you can use it with just using your audio and video. That's the simplest way to use it um, to start with. And that's a really great place to start is just a class discussion. So thank you for joining. And um, Gainel, if you'll stick around, um, I'll answer your question. And there is a eval link 
in the chat and I believe we'll also email that to you for those who had to leave early.